In our last set of videos, we talked about the cr in crud, and this time we're going to talk about the ud in crud. So we're going to look at updating and deleting records that are in our uh, app. And so I'm going to come into Visual Studio and open up our project that we've been working on. Date me. Our big money maker. And when we talk about editing and deleting, where would we typically see that or where would we typically do that? When I run this app and I go to the wait list, a lot of times what we'll see is buttons out here on the right where it says edit and then delete. And so we can go put that uh, functionality in there on each of these rows so that if I want to edit Michael Blue's record, I have that ability to edit or delete. And so let's go into our uh, waitlist.cshtml file. And I'll just add in a couple of columns here at the end. So a column and it's going to be a, an A tag and the a tag is going to be edit and then I'll have a second column here at the end that says a tag delete alright so currently those will just look like links and so it's probably best to make them a class equals button and um, so class equals button and then we can look at the different I think button danger does the red so if we're doing delete maybe we do a red there and we'll just see what it looks like. So I'll save that and run it. And now when we run this, we'll have out to the right here, these things that look absolutely nothing like a button. <laughs> All right, but they are. So it's getting the, this is where my CSS, uh, so this should be a button, button danger, and then uh, what is this? Button, button, uh, I don't know what. Info? Let's try that. Very, very weak in my CSS skills, as we've discussed. Okay, so that looks maybe like a normal way of doing it. So we've got an edit button and a delete button out here to the, to the right. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and close that. And so now, how do we know? So, so when we click on that edit button, what is it that we want to do? And I start. I want to. I want you to start thinking as you go through this, like trying to anticipate how we do it. Think about it. What do we need to do before we actually go through and do it? Just pause for a minute and think about how would I go in and edit this information. So when they click on this button, edit, I could take them to a brand new form solely for editing. But that new form is going to heck, look a heck of a lot like this dating application form, right? It's going to go back to the same information. And so can we just send them on edit to this form? And we obviously can. So we can put in here an action so I can come in and say the ASP act, or ASP controller is equal to home. Let's make sure we get them to the right controller because eventually we're going to have multiple controllers and make sure you spell controller right. Um, and then we want to have our ASP action and we can make a new action called edit um, that we can address in our, our controller, right? And so I can go in there and do that and the same thing with the delete. I can go in and say you know, ASP act, uh, controller equals home, ASP action equals delete. We'll hold off on that for a minute. But on our edit, now what I'm going to need is in my home controller to create a new action. So public I action result, and I'm going to call it edit. So on the edit, what is it that I want to do? Where do I want to go when I, when I click on the edit? And I just got done saying we can send them on an edit to the dating application form. And so this is where we would say something like return view, but in the in the parentheses this time, instead of just leaving it blank and letting it send it to the view associated with the same name of the action, we can say what I want to do is go to the dating application. All right, so, <clears throat> excuse me, so we, we uh, 
run the app now, and when I click on this edit button, then it should send me, if we're doing things right, to the dating application. Now we're gonna have a problem here because the dating application is looking for a view bag full of majors to be able to load up the majors. And you're saying, well, wait, I, we did that, right? Well, we did it in the action of um, dating or uh, yeah, dating application on the HTTP get. We loaded up the majors and passed it down to that view. But that only exists, notice the braces, that only exists in that dating application on the get when we're going there, right? In this case, we're going to edit and then we're calling the dating application. We haven't, um, we're not uh, loading up, we're not going to this action, we're going to the view. So this edit, is not going to take us to this action. Now there is something we call uh, redirect to action, and we can send them to the dating application action, and then it would load up these view bag majors, but then it's not going to have our information for the edit, and we don't wanna, this is for new records, and we don't wanna get that confused. And so I do want to return the view and go to the dating application, but all I need to do is, just like I was loading up the majors here, I can take that same code on an edit and load up the majors here as well. All right, so now we have the majors loaded up. So now if I save and rerun this, then when I click on edit, it will take us to the dating application the only problem now is there's nothing in this application. So how do I tell the app that I want the record for George Bluth, uh, uh, Michael Bluth, that was the first one, to go to that form? I need that information loaded up here so I can send it to this form to be able to um, get that information in for me to be able to edit. And so again, just think about it for a second. How am I gonna accomplish that? Just pause the video, wait a second, and think about how am I going to accomplish that? How am I going to figure out which record it is and then pass that record in? All right, just look at the time. I think this will work better starting in a new video. So we'll go ahead and end this one there. Spencer, out.